In this episode, we're going to venture away from our camera reference a little and look at how we can create some wear and tear within our textures to achieve a slightly more realistic, aged look with our camera. If we look at some other photo references, we can easily see areas on the metal, sticker and plastic have scratched or worn away. You can also sometimes spot dust that has settled in the crevices of the camera. So today we'll begin to achieve this look using procedural layers, a bit of manual projection painting using the paint through tool, and introduce another feature in Mari in part two of this section, ambient occlusion. Ambient occlusion is a method of mimicking soft shadows produced by natural ambient light. But it can also be used to isolate crevices within our object, which can then be used to simulate dust that often settles in nooks and crannies. Creating these masks is also going to produce variation across our object to make it look more lived and realistic. Let's take a look at creating wear and tear on the metal and stickers first. We can approach creating wear on the metal by utilising layer masks to create different layers of breakup. First, let's identify the colour layer for the metal parts. I do this by opening the layer palette and hiding and unhiding the layers to check which part of our colours in the viewport get hidden. I think we should create a group layer to add all of our lens metal texture layers into, so we can tidy up our layer palette a bit and start to isolate our textures into their own groups. Select the colour layer we created for our metal and click the group layer button. Let's rename this group to lens metal or something similar. It's a good idea to keep in mind that towards the end of your project, you're going to have a lot of layers. So always make sure you name them and group them appropriately, especially if you're going to be collaborating on texture projects with other artists. So let's also rename our color layers to be something more recognizable. To create the scratches on our metal surfaces, we're going to use projection painting with the paint through tool and a layer mask so that when we paint with the paint through tool, the scratches we paint will reveal the layer below. So in fact, we first need a layer that the scratches will reveal. If we take a look at reference imagery, scratches often reveal lighter, less worn material. So we should create a colour layer that uses a lighter metallic colour than the layer above it. Create a new colour procedural layer in our Lens Metal group and name it Lens Metal Lighter Colour. Click the colour panel in the procedural layer and let's start by approximating the metal colour above, then raising the value slider of this colour towards the lighter end of the spectrum so we end up with something like this. You can also open the colours palette and along the left side you'll see the six most recent colour swatches you used if you want to check the values for any recently used colours that you might want to reuse again. We can review these colours against our reference later and adjust them if needed. Then we want to make sure this layer masks off the rest of the object and only appears for the lens metal areas. So let's go into our selection group palette, select the metallic lens group, head back to the layer palette, right click the lighter lens metal colour layer, go to layer mask, add mask from selection. Now we have our two layers, our top layer and our bottom layer. To demonstrate how this mask is going to work, I'm going to select the top metal layer now, when your layer has a mask present, this icon appears. When the mask is active, it will appear bright orange. I'm going to make sure the mask is active and activate my paintbrush with the P key and choose white from the colour swatch picker. As you can see, when I start painting, nothing's happening. Let's change the colour of my paint to black. When I start painting with black, the top layer colour is being removed to reveal the lighter colour underneath. Painting with white reveals nothing, it's going to retain the current layer. If I hit the I key, it brings up all of our available targets and layers. This is a really quick way to switch between painting different layers and channels by the way. But in this case, I just want to show you what this layer mask looks like. If I select the current paint target in the shaders column, which is our layer mask as indicated by the orange icon, you can see the mask is being displayed in the viewport. The white areas are where our top layer are shown and the black areas where our bottom layer are shown. If I pick a grayscale colour from the middle of the spectrum, it's going to produce a blend between the two. What this means is we could load in a grayscale image to project onto our surface as a mask that lets us paint scratches and other wear onto our metal surface. So let's go ahead and do that. I can switch back to my regular shader view in the viewport by selecting Principled BRDF from the shader column. 
Open up the image manager and load in the scratches image. We need to enable scale our data on this image as we don't want the colors in the image to be converted by Mari because we're not actually using color from this image. We're actually using the raw zero to one values in the image to paint this mask. Zero in the image being fully black and one being fully white. We want all the values in the image to be retained and not be converted in the color space conversions. Please make sure when you import images to be used for masking that you tag them as scalar data here. Make sure the top metal layer is selected and the mask is active and activate the paint through tool using the U key. We can also turn on auto bake and clear in the bake behavior properties for this section since it's going to allow us to paint nice and quickly. Drag the scratches image into the viewport and resize it using Ctrl and Shift and move it using Shift. Rotate using Ctrl. If you need to see what you're doing a bit better, reduce the viewport image opacity by using the Shift and minus button. You can project the scratches onto the surface by placing the image over the area you want to scratch up and just paint over it. Do this for all the lens metal parts to add some nice scratch breakup. Remember, you can check the appearance of your painted mask at any time by hitting the I key and selecting current paint target from the shaders panel. You can even paint from here if you need and then select principal BRDF when you want to view them through your shader again. To add some darker metal breakup around the lens, we can add another new layer on top of the other two layers. Bring the colour value all the way down so we have a darker metal colour. Right click the layer, go to layer mask, add mask. And this time we're going to hide all because we're only going to paint on this layer mask to reveal areas of it instead of paint to hide areas. This time we're just going to paint the breakup manually, so hit the P key to activate the paint tool. And in our shelf palette, we can select a nice preset brush to use in the hard surface brushes tab. Select a colour that's not pure white or pure black to create some nice gradual breakup in this metal surface. You can reset the colours back to pure black and pure white by clicking this button here or pressing D on the keyboard and switch between these two colours while painting by hitting X on the keyboard to quickly hide or quickly reveal your layers. Use the tool help at the bottom of the UI to check the hotkeys for scaling and rotating your active brush. You can keep going with this as much as you like to really build up the worn away surface of the lens. Alright, now it looks like our lens has experienced some handling, let's move on. The effect we want to achieve on the sticker is a bit of paper wear on a couple of the corners. Paper often starts to wear at the very edge and gradually wears inwards over time. So we can utilise the techniques we just used on the lens for the sticker. Let's create a new group for our Lubitel sticker. Let's take a look at some torn sticker references. They often have varying degrees of noisy opacity towards two clean torn edges. How do you think we can achieve that in Mari? Well, we know that our sticker is built up of paper layers and that paper is often a white or off-white. In order to get that white layer, we should copy the Lubitel sticker layer and paste it onto a new layer. Make sure our new layer goes underneath the existing sticker layer we're going to make that layer fully white by adding a levels adjustment to it and sliding the black output all the way up to one so there's no black in the image.
Then we'll add a HSV adjustment to the same stack and change the value amount to 0.85. So we're creating a slightly off white. Then add a color balance adjustment to the same stack and push the yellow blue highlight to minus 0.016, just to add a tint of yellow to our white layer. Instead of using projection painting this time, we can just manually paint in rough torn edges using paint brushes. Activate the paint tool using the P key and create a layer mask on our top sticker layer so we can start the inside tear. The felt tip brush inside the basic brushes tab of the shelf is going to work for creating some crisp torn looking edges. Turn on all in the project on setting of the painting palette so we're not limited to selected faces anymore. Change the colour to black using the colour picker and then just start stamping down the brush along some of the corners. Now we've created the inner tear, let's create the outer tear. Select the bottom sticker layer we just created and click add layer mask. Once the mask is active, create some outer tears by stamping down the brush along the very edges. You can change the colour to a light grey to create more of a blend between the two layers and it should start to simulate a torn sticker. Do this as much as you like along the edges of the sticker and make sure to save your work once you're done. Don't be afraid to play around with different brushes in Mari to achieve the effect you're after. There are plenty to choose from in the shelf that have different shapes and behaviours. Utilising them with masks can really produce realistic looking effects. In the next part, we'll use similar techniques using layer masks to create a dust mask with ambient occlusion. Music